Dr. Boutier, why the increase? Well, suicide is a complex phenomenon, complex human behavior. But as one of the leading causes of death, um, it is a largely health-related outcome that is generally preventable. And so we're really trying to understand the reasons for this trend in increase in the national rate. And we have to think about things like attitudes towards mental health, whether we can access care, our culture around connecting with others, with our loved ones, with our communities, even when we're in distress. That's a, that's a big part of it access to lethal means, so the opioid epidemic and the infusion of a lethal means into our, our populations on a societal level um, is a very big deal. Changes in the economy, and even if you look at the middle-aged population, which is the age group that's shown the largest um, rate increase over that uh, decade, decade and a half period, you think about what issues middle-aged Americans are facing. They're aging parents, raising children in an increasingly um, disconnected society, again, with the, the infusion of social media. There are many different factors, but, but largely we need to think about um, that opportunity to connect with others and to pay attention to the signs of distress in our loved ones, in our community members. Is there a typical case? Well, there are many different risk factors that converge at a moment in time in a person's life that culminate in that, that acute increase in risk for suicide. And just like Kevin is describing, there are changes in the brain and in mental health that almost always converge with life stressors, whether it's you know relationship stressors, job stressors. The, the problem is in terms of thinking it about about suicide and about mental health purely in terms of life stressors is that resilience is actually um, more the, the, um, the norm and millions of Americans, millions of people around the world face those kinds of stressors every day and don't necessarily become suicidal. So there are other factors that come to bear to, to kind of lead to that perfect storm, if you will. So, you know, when you're asking, is there a typical case no, every, every human being is, is unique and individual, but I will say those changes in mental health and those life stressors and oftentimes physical health, substance use, those chronic pain, those are some of the more common features. And then that access to lethal means, that's kind of the, um, the last and key part to that, that puzzle that creates acute suicide risk. Many facets come together to precipitate a suicide. Often there's an underlying mental illness, and then the person may have had other traumas in their life. They don't have good coping mechanisms. And then there's usually some trigger, like you, you lose your spouse, you go bankrupt. Um, one of the reasons we're seeing an increase right now is that every time there's been an economic downturn, there's always an increase in suicide. So there are things that we can do to help people by getting them help, by pre preventing social isolation, but we don't know. I mean, some people think there's a suicide gene because why do some people with depression die by suicide and not others? We don't know that answer yet. We know there are medications that can help, but there's not a cure. Never miss a beat. Subscribe to Larry King now and watch new episodes every day.